In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this painting, starting with mixing color and a blank canvas and working all the way up to finish. We're gonna start mixing with just the raw umber and white. That's all we're gonna paint with for this exercise. And I'm gonna start mixing up just some values. So the raw umber will be my darkest dark, titanium white will be the lightest light. So I can leave those alone and I'll keep my colors clean by picking a dirty spot, kind of maybe down here. You'll notice when you mix paint, and that's another reason I like this shape of palette knife, it allows me to grab a little bit of paint. The tapered diamond shape allows me to mix a, a small pile or a larger pile. So this has just a little bit of white in it. I can do more than that. You don't need a lot of values, but it's gonna be very useful to have a few values mixed up already. And you can see as I mix, the paint kind of spreads out, which is why I want to have a, a dirty spot so I can keep my values nice and clean. So I'm not going to have a lot of dark darks in this. But uh, we'll go ahead and mix up a few more values. I've sped up some of this mixing a little bit. So you notice I mix in one spot, and apologies, my shoulder blocks some of the mixing some of the time, but it's a repetition of what I was doing before and working my way from dark to light. And spending some time getting your values laid out is important because when you're working on something, the more you have available to you, the less you'll have to change gears. If it's going well, you want to stop and mix a different color up. There, I've sped it up even more so we can get through the color mixing part and one more thing about it and then we'll get to painting. One other thing I think that's useful to mention is that you'll notice I mixed from dark to light. That way, uh, as I mix, I'm basically adding more white in. And for this, this very simple palette, I think that works effectively. So I'm just gonna clean up, clean up the palette. If you have glass, that's, I think, a good palette because you can scrape it down with a razor and then it's really clean, ready to use. And again, I, in the preparing grounds video, was talking about preparing a ground like this, a uh, gray ground with raw umber and white. So I just painted the back of the glass with the same thing. That way, the way the paint looks on the palette is a better predictor for the way the paint looks on the painting. If one of your surfaces is white, it's going to look very different. So just to show you even what, like this looks pretty light on there, but if I put it in front of something white, it's still, well, it looks light still, but it's a little bit darker than it was. Like, see, it's like a, looks more like a, a gray on the white than it does on the palette. So painting your surfaces gray may seem like an extra step, but it's intended to make things more easy, simple, and clear for you. So now, I'm ready to start painting. So since this is our first painting, let's just go over our setup. I have here a little brush washer to clean my brushes out. If you have a silicone, that's fine. I have a little medium in here, which is really just like Galkid Light or the M Gram Walnut Alkid Medium. And even if I just, you could paint with just the Gamsol in your brush washer and this as well. Um, but you we want to keep them separate because that way this one stays clean and i have some brushes i have my surface already to paint on and my surface is all gray which is going to make things much easier before we get started i switched this to a white ground just in case some of you weren't able to prepare and you have a, a white prime canvas that's otherwise ready to paint on so if that's what you have First of all, make some gray or get some gray gesso and paint the rest of them so it won't happen to you again. But if this is what you have now, a good thing to do is just take a little bit of the raw umber. So the raw umber up here is a quick drying color. So just use it. Don't mix it with another gray to make this gray. Just the raw umber. And we're gonna brush it on real thin. pretty thin with a big brush and then maybe even more than that and then I'm going to wipe it down 
Now the reason I want to use the raw umber and not mix a gray is because the raw umber dries quickly, so it won't be as slippery for you if you're trying to get something going on it. That way you don't have the pure white to deal with and you have a, a little bit of a gray. But I'm wiping it off so that it's not so slippery. If I get the surface a lot of solvent on it and then I try to paint on it, it's going to be very slick, hard to control. So this is sort of a, an emergency measure if you started that way. Um, there are uh, techniques where you can sort of work reductively and just keep erasing, sort of like charcoal reduction. That's kind of a separate thing. For now, we're going to try and paint as directly as possible. So now we're ready to start painting. And this up here is something we'll talk about a lot. And it is a hierarchy for painting from Corot. And it's form first, which is drawing things in, composition, where things are, proportion. Basically a map I'm going to make just with the raw umber without any white in it. Then tone, which is also called value, how light or dark things are. That's why we have our grayscale mixed up with umber to white. And then color, which we won't really deal with today since we're just working with one color. But when you're doing paintings in general, if your color's not working out, a lot of times it's because your tone or your value is off. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now when you start these notes I wrote up here, I did with just raw umber. And when you start to paint, you notice I just dipped the point of the brush into this. So even if I just have Gamsol in both, I want one that's cleaner. And this has a little bit of medium in it. Again, if you're not sure what to use, Galkid Light or M. Graham Walnut Oil are both good ready to use mediums. It's just gonna speed up the drying a little bit, make it a little easier to control. So I'm gonna start with not a whole lot of paint on here. And I want an egg, so we'll just put the egg in the middle. All right. So for this project, I basically want you to get the egg and at least a couple corners of the box. Because the point of this is to have you start to learn how to control paint, right? And so we have hard edges and soft edges. So up here I have like a little clock. I put that up there because the next thing I'm gonna try and figure out are these angles, right? So I have behind the egg, the angle of the box, like what angle is that? You could build up the perspective, but we're gonna do what's called empirical perspective, which just means perception, so eyeballing it. An easy way to do that is think of a clock, right? So if I have nine o'clock and I hold my brush over there, and align it with that rear edge. I can see it's after nine, it's probably about yeah, 9.20 or so. So I can take my brush over here and match that angle. I also have this. This is just a piece of square dowel and I'm gonna use it as what's called a mall stick. Malen is German for painting and you'll see in old paintings sometimes I'll have a, one with a little leather ball on it, they're, they're resting on the painting. This is so I don't put my hand on the paintings. Times when you're drawing, there's a tendency to rest your hand on the drawing. With oil paint, obviously that's gonna be more of a problem. So this stick is just to keep your hand off the painting. You could do the same thing with a brush if you want, if you don't have a square dowel. But these are really easy to get. And the other thing that's good that you can do with them is make nice straight lines. So once I find that angle again, like a little after nine back here behind the egg, if you want to make a straight line, you don't want to put it flat against your painting and smush the brush against it because the wet paint will make a, a really messy edge. The metal part here is called a ferrule, right, below the bristles. I'm going to rest the ferrule on this and then I can make a nice straight line like that, right? And I'll do the same thing again. So the box uh, edge that's cornered coming towards me is before nine o'clock. So if I hold out, I'll hold out my mall stick, put it at nine, drop it down. That's probably about eight o'clock actually, right? A little bit less. So I'll carry the angle over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And just pull this up to the egg. So I have pretty good straight lines there. And then for the one that goes down, I'll just do the same thing, have it go straight down. Actually, I might need to go further over. 
Now, if you make a mistake, a good thing about oil paint is you can take a little dot of your solvent from your brush washer and just wipe it off, right? So now I have a little bit of a map. This is basically gonna be the form for my painting. The tone I have here in values, and I wanna start working with my darks and work my way up into the lights. So when I look at the egg sitting on there, the darkest part I have is actually right where the egg rests on the box is my darkest dark. So I'm gonna have one little note under here. And I wasn't super careful about the shape of the egg because I'm gonna work, I'm gonna paint what's behind it and come back up to it. So I'll have a chance to nudge the drawing a little bit. If it was something more complicated, I'd be more careful about the drawing to start with. I'm gonna now put in a little bit of that cast shadow. Right, and there's cast shadow here. Again, just a little bit. You don't wanna get your, when you're starting, you wanna keep your paint a little bit dry. If you get too much paint on it, or too much, uh, solvent or medium, it can get slippery and be hard to control. So I want it to be easy to control, so I want to keep it a little bit drier. Now I want to work, so dark to light, back to front. I think my next value up is going to be that felt behind the egg. And the word background is a word that's used a lot. I actually don't like the word background. The word I like to use instead is the word surround, because background sort of implies that there's nothing. And I see where this egg is lighter than what's behind it because what's behind it is darker. So painting is a relational art. The light on the lit part of the egg is a function of everything that's around it. So there's no nothing in painting. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna treat it like it's nothing since the values I'm seeing here are, don't exist by themselves, right? They're a function of everything that's around them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a big brush and you should use the, the largest brush you can control and I'm going to start putting the surround in, right? I'm just going to go ahead and put in what's behind the egg. Right. And see, I can kind of, when I, when I reiterate the egg in front of this, I'm going to put the paint on top. So the egg's in front, the paint's on top. Um, also, since the felt behind is a little bit lighter up here and a little darker down there, I might grade it out a little bit just to show that there's light on that surface, right? We don't want to just paint everything entirely flat. So let's do this as quick as I can. Now my egg got a little smushed, I'll have to fix that shape a little bit later. I can make it a little darker down here. So now I'm just grading it out. So actually my first soft edge is what's behind the egg, right? Since I'm going from a little bit darker down here to a little bit lighter up here. So I'm gonna slowly work my way to that egg. This is also why it's good to have um, little piles of color mixed up because then you can, you can kind of correct with them, right? You can sort of fix your, it's easier to fix things that way. So now I'm gonna, take a look at, first of all, my, my egg right here. It basically goes from day to night right here. That's called the, the dominant plane break. So the egg is good. It has all the sort of parts of the shadow on it. The reason we're starting with something that's white on something that's white is because it really isolates light on form, right? Once we start painting something that's more complicated, like a hand, you know, my hand's different colors, a little different on the palm than on the back. 
if you have something that's white, it's just really about turning the form. So I'm gonna look for that plane break. So again, if that's the, we'll say this is the night side, if the egg is a planet, this would be the night side of the planet. All right, and then up here would be the day side of the planet. Right, like the egg's a little planet. That's gonna be a very useful thing as you paint more complicated things for you to look to sort out. Where a form goes from light to dark is gonna help you make decisions and make it easier for you to paint it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way slowly up to that egg. I'll go ahead and put the top of the box in. That's not light enough. So another thing I'll do, I'll put a little, I'll put a little dot on there to test it, right? And I put too big of a dot on there to test it. But that way before I just start covering it in and assuming I'm right, especially this uh, gray ground you're working on, that's why it makes it so much easier than working on white. So I'm just gonna put the top of the box in. Now, if I feel like that, that paint I got on there is too much of a mistake, again, I can just pull a little bit of it off, right? Rather than sort of fight with it. You'll notice I'm starting fairly thin. I'm starting thin because thin paint is easier to change. And by it, thin, a little bit dry paint, right? Not too slippery and wet. So the top of the egg here too. Start getting some of that going. So this, the t where the box faces up is definitely lighter than where the box faces to the side. So we'll get a little bit of that box facing to the side. Yeah, I can pull over that edge I had. Now these shadows, shadows are softer the further they are from the objects that are casting them. So if I go over here, for example, and put my hand here, where my finger is touching the box, that edge is sharp and it gets slots much softer as it goes further from the object that's casting it. So the edge of the shadow here is much harder than it is out there. So on our egg, shadow, the cast shadow, we want to soften it up. So I'm just going to pull in. So when you're softening up edges, you can either work from the light into the dark or the dark into the light, right? I can, oops, that's a little too light. All right, so I'm just just pulling one into the other. And also my touch becomes softer when I'm trying to get a softer edge. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm touching the, the edge a little more gently. And the bristles of these brushes, these are synthetic brushes. So if you're having trouble getting soft edges and you have natural hair bristle, like a hog hair bristle, and it's a stiffer bristle, that will tend to give you um, make it a little bit harder to get quiet edges, right? So the stiffer the bristles, if I had a toothbrush and I was trying to paint with it, it would just push the paint around and scratch it. That's an extreme example, but just to, just to make the point that the softer the bristles, the easier it is to make um, soft edges. So I want a soft edge on the cast shadow. And of course, I definitely want soft edges on the egg. And part of the point of this exercise is you can really make a lot of the world out of these two edges, out of a hard edge and a soft edge, right? We're sort of, we spend a lot of time in kind of boxes in the box shape and like your head is sort of an egg shape. You can make a lot of things with these two shapes. So these two kinds of edge are good to be able to control. So I'm starting to get to the egg. Now I have, ref the egg has day or the lit light part, night or the shadow part. We have a little bit of reflected light here on the egg. 
and we have a little bit of reflected shadow at the very bottom of the egg where the eggs uh, touching the box and we have a highlight so those are the five main parts of the shadow and I'm gonna go ahead and try and get them going so the reflected light here is not as bright as the direct light up here because it's reflecting off of this so I want it to be lighter but not quite as light as I want that and this also gives me a chance to rework my egg edge going to paint over those words. So now that edge is way too hard. So I'm going to come up into it. So that's how you make a softer edge. Like I'm pulling the light edge into the dark edge. It does work the other way. If you want to pull a dark edge into a light edge, that will work as well. So I don't want to get those edges nice and soft. So this will take some, you know, it might take some practice. If the paint, like if I get too much solvent on there and it's slippery, a little hard to control, if I wipe it off a little bit, that can make it easier to control too. Right, so I just want to go pull slowly up into that edge and kind of gently to get a very soft edge. Right, now this is still down here, a little lighter than what's behind it, lighter than that felt behind it. And at the very bottom part, you notice I wash my brushes out a lot, especially if I'm going, you know, the last time I had paint on this was white to write day with it. So if I wanna get one of my darker darks, I definitely wanna make sure my brush is clean. So I'm just gonna put put a little bit of the reflected shadow. And then I can start to, I can see the shadow over here where the egg's hanging off, that there's more shadow on the at the outside of the egg, right? So I'm slowly, I'm working my way from the night side of the planet up into the day side of the planet. The planet being, of course, the egg. Reflected light. I think that reflected light's a little bit brighter. So you'll notice something. If I get lighter paint on it, on the brush, and the paint is already wet, the first time I touch it, it's what was on the brush. The second time, it pulls a little bit more of what was there before which can be useful when you're doing something like painting an egg, right? When you want very soft edges. So that can help you actually make these edges soft. So now I'm starting to work my way up towards the day side of the egg. And I have a place right here where I have two values that are a little too close to each other. And I would say that what's behind is a little bit darker than the cast shadow here. So I'm just going to go back into my surround and pull that down a little bit. So it's really, you want to emphasize differences between things. Especially right now, all I have are really shape and value, right? Or form and tone. So uh, I... I went over the egg a little bit there, but I can fix that. Right, I just want to pull that all the way back up. There, now there's a difference between those two things. And now I can start to come up into the lit part of the egg. So the lit part is pretty bright. So I'm going to use a pretty bright value. Let's just take a guess at it. So I also want to save room for my highlight, which where the 
if you just have something around, just think where it faces most directly into the light, which is gonna be up about in there. So I wanna maybe save that spot out so I can get a nice clean highlight on it. So this top part's pretty light. my drawing a little bit. Right, and so I'm being very careful where this edge comes down because I want to keep a soft edge. So I'm building this up in a really logical way I started with the raw umber drawing everything in because it's a quick drying color. You don't want to, um, and I started thin because it's easier to change. Both those things make things easier on me. Painting has enough complications without you um, making choices that make it harder for you. We want to make it as clear and simple as possible because there's already plenty to do. So I think my edge over here got a little bit messed up so right if I want to be more careful I can use that that mall stick or I could use a you know another brush handle if I wanted all right pull that edge down a little bit all right so I'm coming slowly up to where I have highlight. Egg's pretty bright. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my brush is really clean to put a highlight on, because I don't want any of, you can see from even wiping off over here, I got some umber here. If I want a nice clean highlight, I wanna make sure it's just my lightest light on there. And then, since the egg is soft, I also want to soften out the edges of that highlight. So I can use maybe the next value down and kind of pull up to it. Alright. Try and get rid of some of my little streaks. So those little streaks can be hard to get rid of but you just want to keep a light touch see i'm not pushing into the brush i'm sort of pulling along almost like i'm dragging a broom around right it keeps those edges nice and soft so go put a highlight in there and then pull the edges out so now i pretty much have everything and i i was trying to go pretty quick uh, you may want to go slower than I do. You probably do want to go a little slower than I was going because I think it will it will help you understand how to control the paint. So this exercise is pretty simple. It's a little deceptive though because these edges are hard to control. So it's deceptively simple exercise, but it's really to give you something to build off of as we move on to more complicated forms. So let me just fuss with the edge a little bit. 